Hello everyone and welcome to the front-end crash course. In the previous lectures, we've successfully logged in user and stored the user info and authentication state in memory. Today, let's learn how to use views props to display those information. First, I'm going to create a new component named userInfo.view. The same as in other component, we'll have a section to write TypeScript code and another section for the HTML template where we define how the component looks like. To display user info, I'm going to reuse an existing PrimeView component named Cart. You can search for it in the PrimeView documentation page and copy this template to our user info component. Inside the card, we have two template sections, one for the title and one for the content. Let's rename the title to user profile. We will display user's information inside the content template. But where do we get the user's info? Well, we'll get it via props or properties. It is a convenient way for us to pass data to the component via custom attribute. This will make our component super independent and reusable. With the define props keyword, we'll declare the properties we want to receive from the parent component, where this user info component is used. In our case, we will need a user property of type object and we cast it as a prop type user. This is a user type that we declared in the last lecture, and we should mark it as required, because we can't display anything without the user data. All right, now back to the content template. First, I'm going to create a div to hold all inner elements, and assign proper CSS classes to it, just like in the login user component. To remind, these flex and row gap classes will create a nicely separated vertical grid where we can put each info of the user in one row. Let's create a div to display the full name. I'm going to copy this i tag, which is used to display the user icon in the login user component. Then add a span tag with the value is user.fullName. Here you can see the double curly bracket allow us to write TypeScript code in it. Thus, we can easily access the user props declared in the script section above. Next, we'll create another div to show the email address of the user. Let's look up a proper icon for this field in the PrimeView documentation. I think this PI envelope is the most suitable one. So let's copy its name and paste it to the class of the i tag. And that's basically it. Our user info component is now ready to be used. Now to use it, we'll open the home view and add user info to the main template right under the welcome title. The component should be automatically imported. But for now, there's a red line under it indicating a syntax error. The reason is that the user info component requires a user property. So we have to pass a value into it via an attribute of this tag. Simply type colon user equals and pass in the user object, which we can take from the store where we save it in the previous lecture. We have to import it from the store.ts file in the parent folder. Then the user object can be accessed via store.state.user. Now there's another issue. This user object can be null in case the user hasn't logged in yet. So it cannot be assigned to the required user property of type user. And indeed, we should only display user info if the user has already logged in. In view, we can easily add this condition to the component using vif. Here we are adding vif equal store.state.user, which means only display this component if store.state.user is not now. In the other case, when user hasn't logged in yet, we should display the login form. So that's why we add this vls condition to the login user component. Okay, let's save the code and check it in the browser. Hmm, what's going on here? Nothing shows up on the screen except for the welcome message. So there's definitely something wrong with the user info component. I see, we're using the card component but forgot to import it. After adding the import and saving the file, we should be able to see the user profile card with the username and email. Since the auth state is stored in memory, 
it will be cleared when the page is refreshed, and thus the login form will show up. After we enter the correct username and password and click login, the user profile card will appear again, and the login form will disappear. That's exactly the behavior we wanted. Now, let's improve the UI a bit. Here there are no spaces between the icons and the values. To add some spacing, we can use the existing CSS class from Pramflex. I'm going to add some margins to the span divs with the M2 class. As you can see, the texts are now separated from the icons, which looks much better than before. Let's go a bit further by changing this simple email text into a link so that we can click on it to compose a new email to the user. For that, I'm going to surround the user's email with an A tag and set its href or hypertext reference to mail to user.email. Note that here we are using a backtick string or template literals to easily embed the value of the user email into the link. Alright, now if we go back to the browser, we'll see that the email has been displayed as a link, and clicking on this link will bring out a mail client to let us send email to the user. Pretty cool, right? And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was interesting and useful for you. Thanks a lot for watching, happy learning, and see you in the next lecture.